So, of course, you know, they did the back-to-back -back episode 17 and 18 double feature finale. I want to break it up still. I want to do uh, the reviews and the recaps and the rethoughts and whatever. <laughs> Just the same way I've done all the other ones. So, I'm only going to be discussing episode 17 right now. So, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? <laughs> Go watch it and then come back. So, this episode, all right, all right. I know I say this every episode, but I think this is my very favorite episode. It may be my very favorite episode, not only of season three, but just in the entire series all together. We start out back in the room with Gordon and Tammy and Albert, and Gordon's saying, you know, that he just couldn't do it. He couldn't pull the trigger. Still kind of dying in, in there, and he, and he just couldn't do it. And then... We get this mega bombshell. This episode, you guys, is just so action-packed. That's one of the reasons that I'm like, you know what, let me just do 17 first because, well, 18 was a little bit slower, but there's still a lot to talk about there. So Gordon turns to Albert and he admits that he's been keeping a secret from him for the past 25 years. And we finally get the answer to the question we've, at least this season, been really wondering about. But basically, it's kind of been in our heads since Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. And that question is, who the hell is Judy? <laughs> so Gordon admits that Briggs had actually discovered this sort of force, this super negative energy entity um, that used to be called Zhao Dai. And since then, just kind of gotten shortened to or nicknamed Judy. And he admits that Jeffries had been on to Judy before he disappeared and that Gordon Dale and Briggs had actually come up with the plan to sort of locate Judy. And that's when Briggs went missing. And right before Cooper went missing, he told Gordon, if I ever go missing like these other guys here, you do everything within your power to find me because I'm trying to get two birds with one stone. And I know, just like me, you guys are like, this is what the giant was talking about. We're going to get a little conclusion here. Oh my God, yes, 430. Linda, Richard, two birds, one stone. What's going on here? Um, and then Gordon starts to say that basically this plan must have been, you know, enacted because they should have heard from Cooper by now. And that's when we get the phone call, Vegas... <laughs> FBI. Uh, Bushnell gets on the phone because he's got a message for Gordon from Cooper. And of course, it's fabulously cryptic the way we love all of our messages between those two. He says, Gordon, it's 253 in Vegas. And that adds up to 10, the number of completion. So I kind of think, you know, I'm, I'm getting this feeling like, all right, we're getting to the apex. We're getting to the finale here. Number 10, we're about to see some actual stuff. We're about, about to actually get some answers. So excited, you guys, for this whole little scene, this whole episode. Um, then the next series of events happen real quick. They keep going kind of back and forth. Um, we get Doppeldale heading to the coordinates. Naido uh, waking up, sensing that Doppeldale must be getting closer. The drunk and Chad, of course, back and forth at each other. We learn... Jerry has been found naked in Wyoming. Poor guy. And his binoculars have killed somebody. <laughs> then we've got Doppeldale at Jack Rabbit's palace. Oh my gosh, you guys. My heart was racing, wondering what was going to happen. Well, the vortex opens up and boom, it's a trap. <laughs> Brings his head, is floating there. The fireman slash the giant. Now Doppeldale is in a cage. Now up on the screen we see the Palmer House. So I'm wondering, clearly that must have been where Doppeldale was trying to head to. Well, the fireman's like, nay, no, Fluffy, you ain't going there. Almost does like this Tinder little swipe left, swipe right kind of technique there. And next, we've got uh, this outside. Of course, we find out that it's actually um, Twin Peaks sheriff's office but for a moment when they had the palmer house up there for a minute i kind of had a, a laughable moment because i was thinking that okay so judy the mother entity the weird experiment birthed bob bob's inside of doppeldale if doppeldale goes to the palmer house where sarah is residing and assumedly housing judy 
is that like a family reunion going on there? Some really wicked, twisted family reunion. It just made me laugh to think of like all of them together. So now we've got Dappledale at the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department. We get more peeks inside the cells. Naido's freaking out. Sneaky old Chad must have known he was going to get busted at some point because he's got a key hidden in the heel of his shoe there. Um, Andy, of course, sees Doppeldale, thinks it's Super Duper Cooper. Not quite sure how. We know that Cooper's got better fashion sense than Doppeldale did. Come on, Andy. Brings him inside the office. And this is where Truman gets his first look at Cooper, and you can tell he's kind of like hesitant, like, I don't know what's up, but I know something's up with this dude, and invites him into the office. And we get this moment, you and I both are going, Andy, what are you doing? And finally, you can see it click inside Andy's head, and he's like, oh, all right, this is very important, very important. And he runs off, and we're like, yay, Andy's going to do it. He's going to help save the day. Now, when Andy goes ahead and uh, makes it down to the cells. Chad's already out. He's got the gun. He's got the drop on him. And he's so mad because Andy's always so sweet and everybody loves him. And everybody hates Chad. And Chad's been holding a grudge for quite some time. Well, Chad, you should know better. The world loves Andy. And there comes Freddy. <gasps> Boom! Punches right through. Uh, the cell door falls off, knocks Chad over. It was awesome. I loved it. And then we're back upstairs. Lucy gets a call, and she's so cute. I'm so glad that we've got some Lucy and Andy in this episode. It's been a minute since I've seen them, and I just love those characters. Um, she, of course, is surprised because we know who's on the phone. It's the real super duper special agent, Dale Cooper. So she calls Truman. She's like, you got a phone call. Truman's like thinking, dude, I got the, what, what are you, I don't want to take the phone call. And she's like, no, you've got to take this phone call. Well, now, Doppeldale is already suspicious of something. Freaking Truman, cool as a cucumber, just like, yeah, uh-huh, where are you at? Talking to Special Agent Dale Cooper while he's supposed to be in front of Special Agent Dale Cooper. It was just so funny to me and how it's so awesome to see Truman be so dang cool. Well, of course, Dappledale now realized something's up. He goes to draw his gun and bam, who gets a drop on him but Lucy, who is so cool, so excited. And I love the moment she was so excited. Andy finally comes upstairs and she's so proud of herself because she finally understands cell phones. I thought it was so funny, such a neat moment there. So we've got everybody up upstairs now. Andy's brought him up there and finally, Hawk shows up. I had really expected to see Hawk a little bit sooner. I was so sad that he wasn't there to help out more. Now we got the woodsmen doing their fancy, uh, I don't know, like bedside nurse dance around Doppeldale to, to, uh, to fix him up. And then we get it. We get Special Agent Dale Cooper arriving back in Sheriff's Department to Wimpy. So cool. So awesome. He gets inside just in time to see the woodsman and just in time that the Bob Bubble is starting to come up out of Doppeldale. Well, he sees Super Duper Coop and he doesn't like him. So he goes after Super Duper Coop, but not for very long because that's when Freddy goes ahead and he initiates his destiny and he starts whipping the crud out of the Bob Bubble. Of course, the Bob Bubble, almost like um, the experiment we saw when he it killed those two young kids, just lashing at him, same way we saw uh, Sarah Palmer. Very quick little uh, bites going on there, kind of like um, was in the, uh, the Xenomorph in Alien where it's coming out there. But Again, not for very long, because Freddy sends that Bob Bubble down into hell before it rises back up, and he knocks it into a million pieces with that super awesome special glove that he's got. That's all taken care of. Of course, everybody's standing there like, what the heck just happened? Super Duper Coop asked Truman for the key to 315 because Briggs told him that uh, Sheriff Truman would have it. And Cooper kind of sees Naido. And there's like this moment of recognition. And then we get this superimposed kind of freeze frame of a close up on Special Agent Cooper. And it lingers there as the rest of the scenes kind of go on and start to play out. Bobby shows up and Cooper explains that um, it was Garland Briggs. Garland Briggs is the reason that everyone was there today. And then he was like, and right on time, 
here's Gordon Cole and yes we get finally the reunion we've been waiting for we've got our fab three FBI Tammy Albert and Gordon coming in the room there um I, it was just so magical to basically see everybody there making me so happy. Of course, the Mitchum brothers and um, our ladies three, our pink ladies three, were also their new little crew that we've got going on. Cooper then goes, everybody's there. He looks at him and he says, the past dictates the future. Now, he kind of starts acting like he might leave and Naido breaks away from the pact and comes over to Cooper and they put their little hands up to each other. And next thing we know, it's this weird sequence where you kind of get um, a vision of the um, red room. We've got our chevron pattern flooring. We've got the weird egg kind of bloody thing. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. But then <gasps> Diane, the real Diane is back. And I tell you what, that girl has got her fashion on point. She got red hair and black and white nails. That woman always matches wherever she is. She looks so cute. Now Coop and Diane then go to kiss. And you can sense the hesitation in Diane because she remembers the last kiss didn't go so damn well. But then you know. We all kind of wonder, like, how are we going to know that it's actually Super Duper Cooper? Diane knew. Diane knew. The one and only Cooper. So happy, so excited. Then there's this weird moment because Cooper asks Diane, do you remember everything? What? Diane, of course, says yes. They both go to look at the clock, and the clock's kind of stuck wavering back and forth between like 257, 258, and then Cooper turns to everyone and he says, we live inside a dream and I hope I see you again, every one of you. Well, if there is a season four, we already know that at least Albert isn't going to be there. I'm not quite sure about the other characters, but I really hope, fingers crossed, that we get a season four. Um, the room starts to go black and Gordon and Cooper call out to each other. Clearly, this moment here, they knew Briggs must have included them both in on this information, and they knew something was about to happen. Shortly, we go ahead and we arrive in the basement of the Great Northern. Now, we've seen this before. James went down there, heard that ringing sound. It also reminded me of um, the pilot from the original um, series in the original season when Bob's hiding in the basement. It's the killer's lair. All of this is happening basically in the same place. They get to the door. Cooper uses his 315 room key that he had at the Great Northern from back in the day. And when he opens the door, you hear that ringing sound get much louder. And before he goes in, he actually looks at Diane and he says, I'll see you at curtain call. And of course, we're all like, what is that supposed to mean? So once we're inside, Cooper's met by our one-armed man, Mike. And he quotes... Um, I think it was in the season and in Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me, but he says, through the darkness of future past, the magician longs to see. One chance out between two worlds, fire, walk with me. So many different interpretations here. Back in the day, I thought it was just like Bob trying to figure out his permanent way to get out of the lodge and try to stay in the world and, and create darkness and chaos and things like that. But now I'm wondering if it's Cooper trying to get out and um, basically separate himself from all the darkness and sort of just evacuate the darkness from the world, which we know is impossible. Um, Mike finishes his little line. There's this crackle of electricity. And then we see Cooper and Mike taking the same route that the woodsman had taken Doppeldale through to see Jeffries. I like the fact that the two of them have different um, sort of journeymen, different guides. Doppeldale's got the woodsman, and Super Duper Coop just needs one guy. He needs Mike <laughs> to show him and get him to all these places that, you know, he's not as familiar with. We get there, and the camera's set up a little bit different. We're actually on the backside of Jeffries watching um, Mike and Cooper walk in. And again, the conversation here between Jeffries and the real Cooper is much more cryptic and odd, even when between uh, Doppeldale and Jeffries. Um, he tells Cooper that he needs to be specific. And Cooper gives him the date of February 23rd, 1989. And Jeffries is kind of in his tea kettle. I'm not quite sure. And he says, it's slippery in here. And he says, if you see Gordon, tell him hi. And he says, Gordon will remember 
the unofficial version, which again, like, what? What are you talking about? We get some more fragmented sentences from Jeffrey. There may be someone. And then he says, did you ask me this? And he pops out a la uh, hookah smoking caterpillar, the um, owl cave emblem. And that forms into sort of like two diamonds stacked up on top of each other, but basically the figure eight or the infinity symbol. And we see this black dot at the bottom of the infinity symbol and it rotates around and that little black dot just goes right back. And I'm not sure if that's like to represent Judy or this dark energy that it's just always present. It's always there. Not quite sure, but it's pretty good interpretations going on there. I'm sure there's plenty other uh, suggestions out there. Once Jeffries is all done, Mike again says electricity. No phone call needed for him or anything. And we get sort of a close-up freeze again on Cooper's face. And then they vanish. And now we're back in Twin Peaks to the night that Laura Palmer died. We get Laura running out of the house, hopping on Jane's bike, Leland slash Bob looking through the window, angry as a mofo. Um, then we see one of the stops where uh, James and Laura uh, pulled off onto the side of the road. Cooper's now in the bushes watching this. And I love the fact that they were able to pull together Firewalk With Me and this season. Because you guys remember, Laura's going off to James and she's not making any sense talking about um, he's going to find you, he's going to kill you. And she looks off into the woods and she screams. Well, at Fire Walk With Me, we're just like, what the heck is this girl seeing? But now, now it's like she's seeing Super Duper Coop in there or something. So sorry, Laura. <laughs> we can do away with this. Well, no, in the next one. <laughs> um, so... We go ahead and um, we flip over. We, James and Laura um, have, have the entire scene play out for us. And if you notice, it's all in black and white, too. Anytime it's like we go back in time, it's in black and white. When we went to the Trinity Project, it was black and white. When we went to this past um, episode with Laura and James, all in black and white. It makes me want to, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch the entire series over again and maybe pay special attention. When things are in black and white, maybe that means that that is the past. Is this past? Is this future? I'll be able to find out a little bit better now. You will, too. We can all watch it and uh, come to con some other conclusions. Um, we go ahead and... Laura ends up meeting up with Coop in the woods. We even see the moment where Leo and Jacques and Ronette are waiting for Laura to show up, but she doesn't because she runs into Special Agent Dale Cooper. And he, uh, she tells him that, you know, I've, I've seen you in my dreams. And we get Laura's song playing, which is so sweet and just so, just so poignant, man. It just really hit. And Cooper takes her hand and says that he wants to, you know, take her home. And this is basically um, Cooper now changing the past. Was the past dictates the future. We watch the scene with Laura's dead body on the beach slowly disappear. And um, Pete actually gets to go fishing this time. And um, we see... After all this, um, everything comes into full color. Once Laura's body sort of disappears, we're now back in full color. We're now back in present time or, yeah, I guess kind of present time. We're now at the Palmer house. And again, it's almost like the, the future again because we've got Judy, the mom, the experiment, whatever is inside Sarah Palmer is freaking out. And she grabs Laura's picture and she starts trying to like smash it. And the glass breaks but no matter how many times she can sit there and try to stab that photo of Laura, Laura's now kind of protected. Cooper's got her. She's a little bit safe. Nothing can really go on. And this, um, this image repeats again and again. They keep replaying that scene where she's just slamming the, uh, the shards of glass onto the picture. Well, I thought she was safe. <laughs> then we're back in the woods with Super Duper Coop and Laura. And we hear that same sort of curtain flapping sound and um, the same kind of chittering sort of naido sounds. And Laura screams. And again, she disappears. 
just like when they were in the red room earlier on in this season, um, she's just gone. So then we kind of fade and we are back, I'm guessing back at the Bang Bang Bar, and it's Julie Cruz, who we know and love from the seasons one and two. So episode 17, we got some questions still? Ah, uh, I think so. <laughs> so the two birds with one stone. What, what is that? Is Cooper trying to save Laura and kill Judy or maybe trap Judy? I'm not quite sure. Um, remember the giant told uh, Cooper about Judy and Linda in 430. Um, so do Richard and Linda have something to do with Judy and getting to Judy? Not quite sure. I was super surprised to find out that Ray was working with the FBI as an informant. So who hired him? to off Doppeldale. Couldn't have been Gordon because Gordon didn't even know it wasn't Cooper really. He had suspicions, but he wasn't quite sure. Um, I'm going to guess that it was still Mike because Ray was able to get the ring and Mike would have been the one to have the ring from when Dougie Dale came back. But again, still so many questions around that little, that whole scene there. Um, Cooper, Gordon, and Briggs had to have known that this this was going to take like 25 years because Gordon's like, oh, we should have heard something by now. If they had been suspecting it was only going to take a short amount of time, Gordon, I don't think he would still be, it would have just been more, more um, prevalent or something would have happened. Like it's not, I, I think they had a really good idea as to what the timeline was going to be. Um, let's see. God, you guys, I loved this episode so much. <laughs> Gordon also mentioned Jeffries in the first part of this episode, but he says, or whatever Jeffries has become. So Gordon knows that Jeffries isn't really Jeffries, that he's kind of like this tea kettle thing. How the heck does he even know this? Next we go, what the heck was with that Cooper message? The number 10. Number 10 is completion. Does this mean that part of their mission was destroying that Bob bubble and that they've at least completed that step into getting to Judy? Please give me a season four. <laughs> um, Cooper knew about the events that were going to happen at the sheriff's department. He even, he says right on time, here is Gordon Cole. So that must mean Briggs has been time traveling. Must have been to all these places, must have been to all these different events to try to figure out the best way to stop them and just sort of reroute everything onto a better path. But now, since it's changed from, from when it originally happened, when Briggs saw it, uh, that means our, our Super Duper Coop still has to have some questions as to what's going to happen because the future is still pretty uncertain and because the past dictates the future and the past is now changed <laughs> who knows the future oh my gosh you guys it just goes in this weird thought cycle over and over again and it's really fun to think about um but again give me a season four <laughs> so how the heck does diane know anything you guys is was cooper did she did cooper send her a little tape with the information on it but then that means like the Tulpa would have known and probably clued in Doppeldale. Did Briggs give her some messages somehow? Did the giant or the fireman or even Mike? Because clearly they show that image when Naido's transforming back in Diane. They show the little red room there. So somehow Diane's clued in to what's going on. We just don't know how or exactly what. Um, final big, big question. Uh, there's a million and one, of course. But for this episode, um, now that Cooper saved Laura, where did she go? Where did she get sucked up into? Does Cooper know where to go to find her? Because he seemed a little like, huh? a little questioning when he turned around and she was gone. Does he have to go back to Jeffrey's and ask for new directions or new coordinates or something? Don't worry. Episode uh, 18, we'll discuss some of these things too. We did get a few answers. Jerry, safe, 
a little cold, I guess, being naked in Wyoming. Um, we got to see Freddy's destiny. We had all suspected that maybe he was going to be taken down Doppelday. At least I had. But he took down the Bob Bubble. Way to go, Freddy. Knocking him out of this world. Uh, I had suspected that Diane was somehow trapped in Naido, and again, it, it actually happened. <laughs> um, one of the things I predicted, many things have not come true, but that one finally did. But I'm wondering, who is Naido then? When Dop or when um, Cooper fell into the non-existent place, was that Diane or was that Naido? And when she flipped the switch, she became... Diane and fell off into the waiting room. I'm just not quite sure. And now we, I guess Laura's alive. Yay! Kind of, sort of, maybe. At least we know that Bob slash Leland didn't kill her when she was younger. So clearly Laura's got some bigger job that she's got to do. She is the one. Everybody knows that. And now we just got to wait for uh, season four. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you stay tuned because I will be filming my review, my recap, um, rewatch. I don't even know what you want to call it. The reflection of episode 18, the super season finale. And then I'm probably, again, going to go watch everything through. Pick out the things in black and white. Try to figure out the timeline and maybe get a couple more answers probably end up with a lot more questions <laughs> but as always you guys thank you so much for sharing this with me and i'll see you again real soon bye hi guys do you like living dead dolls mystery minis cool fun funko toys horror movies walks in the cemetery me too make sure you guys subscribe